You are listening to an exclusive podcast on Money Control. Hello listeners. Welcome to NSC Presents Investocast, an exclusive investor podcast powered by Money Control. I'm your host Rishi K and this brand new podcast is all about getting your money to make better investments for you. All of us have a dream of owning a big house, a big car, taking a foreign vacation every year. Some of us achieve it, some of us don't. Some of us want to save for our children. Some of us want to retire and some of us want to start their own startup. So many goals, so little money. But is that always true? Guess what? A little bit of financial planning, a little bit of education and learning good habits can put all of us on the path of achieving our goals. Now look at it. At the center of all our dreams in the middle of all our plans, the most critical aspect, the road to take us places is our money, our savings and our investments. And how would you feel if you had no map and were lost and didn't know how to handle your money? You don't have to worry anymore. We're here to help you navigate through the ups and downs of your route and help you get closer to your financial goals. National Stock Exchange NSE with the help of Investocast, an exclusive investor podcast powered by Money Control, is committed to improve the financial well-being of people. NSE's endeavor has always been to ensure that an ordinary Indian citizen participates and benefits from the wealth created from India's growth story. They need to be told that with long-term and goal-based investment plans, wealth can be created. Every year, NSE actively conducts a lot of investor awareness programs. These include financial literacy right from school level and skill building at college and university levels. More than 10,000 investor awareness programs were conducted by NSE in the last 10 years. With this new initiative, we will break the limitations of geographical boundaries and reach investors across the country. The initiative will educate investors on investment in an interesting format that they can relate to with the help of a pool of human resources having the right skills and expertise to help enhance financial education for people. National Stock Exchange, with the help of Investocast, an exclusive investor podcast powered by Money Control, is committed to improve the financial well-being of people. Joining us in the inaugural episode of the show today is Santosh Nair, editor Money Control. Santosh oversees the editorial content on the website. He also writes on trends and policies related to the stock market and profiles investment gurus. Hey Santosh, great to catch up with you. You really come from the hot pot of financial markets and uh, the best way to start is at the top. We'd like to know a little more about you. Well, uh, Rishi, uh, thanks so much for that kind introduction. Well, now, uh, I've been writing on the stock markets for nearly uh, about 22 years. Um, and over the last uh, 22 years, I have worked with uh, two business dailies. Uh, I've worked for an internet radio startup, a news agency, and now I've been with Money Control for the last eight years. Uh, I've also written a book called Bulls, Bears and Other Beasts. Uh, that's about a stock market trader's journey on Dalal Street. Uh, besides writing, I also enjoy cooking, reading and conversation. So Rishi, that's about me. Well, they always say that if you have to sit down at a table and in a disciplined manner, write a book, it takes enormous patience. Would you agree? <laughs> well, of course, it uh, took me the better part of almost three hours because uh, discipline is the key uh, element there. Now, let's come to money control and the website's efforts uh, as far as financial education and awareness are concerned. Uh, talk us through that story. So, uh, briefly, uh, uh, a basic idea about Money Control. It's India's leading finance website. We offer data, tools, and content. There are about 20 million users visiting our website every month. Uh, for a vast majority of us, uh, financial freedom is very important. Now, if you see what's different now compared to in the past, is that there are hardly any financial products that give assured returns. Everything is market-related. Besides that, you have well-paying jobs now, but there's nothing like a job for life. That has also undergone a very significant change. So you may be making a lot of money, but then you also need to plan it very well. Well, to your credit, I find that uh, people who use money control are very sticky. Uh, and 
uh, that kind of loyalty is very, very rare to find, and you've worked very hard to to establish that. Yes, definitely, Rashid. The site is now almost about uh, close to, I would say, twenty years old. So, uh, we built our audience painstakingly. over this last 20 years we have taken user feedback very seriously and that's something that has helped us get here so come on i'm really excited about these podcasts uh, there are going to be a few new investors some seasoned investors all uh, tuning in we're hoping over the weeks and uh, also to build our own loyal base of listeners of the of, uh, to this podcast so what are some of the things that both new and seasoned investors can look forward to So Rishi, uh, well, they can look forward to handy tips from market and financial uh, personal finance experts on how to manage their money. The most important thing is that they get good returns on both their savings and investments. So this in turn will help them spend on things that matter to them. It will also tell them how to plan for their retirement, how to build a balanced portfolio, the pros and cons of different asset classes, and many other things. Yeah, and y- you know just the fact that we can simplify things. and simplify financial jargon which is still quite an untamed beast for a lot of people who are uninitiated so the hope is also to to, to get new listeners who come in and demystifying a finance as it were definitely rishi that's also something uh, that this show will try to do because finance as such can be quite intimidating so uh, actually it is not and that's what hopefully that the message will try to give super Okay now with the help of the series all of you who are listening will be able to learn about finances on the go we must have some advice from you santosh for the listeners to keep in mind while investing so let's talk about overall five habits that go a long way in financial planning but uh, habit number 1 which you think is absolutely imperative for anybody who begins their financial planning okay rishi so before i start uh, i would just like to say that uh, you know Uh, there are different rules for different people some things work for some people it uh, it doesn't work for some others so i think everyone should have their own list of five rules so these are some of the things which i have picked from my interaction with people in the market reading books and other things so the first uh, most important rule according to me or important habit as you would put it is that you need uh, some kind of goal in front of you you know this is something I suffered from in the initial years because I didn't have any uh, particular objective in si- sight. So that meant that I was a little careless with the money. But then I noticed that the moment you you set some uh, objective, then probably you have a you have a target. You know that pro- you need X amount of money within this duration. So accordingly, you start then saving, investing, whatever you do. So. uh to my mind the f- most important the first most important habit is that set a goal uh, know uh, what is it that you want to spend on and uh, how much time do you want to save that much so once you have this in mind it becomes a little more it, it's like running a marathon so then you know how you can pace your investments so i would say keep an objective keep a goal and that habit uh, will definitely help you so you could call it a clear goal or a clear target Rule number one um, in Santosh's book is to be clear about that that objective or goal or target. Let's go on to the second habit or uh, the second uh, discipline that you'd like our listeners to have. Uh, the second habit I would say, Rishi, is that uh, we need to understand our own risk appetite quite well. How much risk are we willing to take? Uh, many years back, when I was writing on the markets, uh, one uh, speculator told me that you know the amount of profits that you make is always proportional to the risk you're willing to take so risk appetite of course uh, it varies it varies based on your age profile also uh, if you if you've just started off probably you you have a longer runway in front of you and you can take more risks uh, let's say someone who's closer to retirement won't be able to take so much of risk but even within individuals you'll find that each of us has a certain tolerance as to how much risk we can take when i say risk probably Rishi, you should be willing to write off uh, that amount. You, can, you should say that okay, this this much I will put it in risk assets. There's a chance that it will give me some fantastic returns. But if it, you know, if it just uh, uh, almost the entire chunk vanishes, I'm willing to live with that. Understand your risk well. That again uh, is is very critical because if you take too much risk when you don't have the appetite for it, and then something goes wrong, then it can really upset your plans. Conversely, Santosh, can I ask you if, if we can put it this way, how how well can you handle your losses? Exactly, exactly. Right? 
There's yeah. another way of approaching it and looking at it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the third habit or the third discipline or the third activity that you'd like our listeners to stand by. So, Rishi, the third thing here is that uh, financial products as such, most of them are not very easy to understand. Well, at some level they are, but other than a fixed deposit, you know, most of them are are market linked. In there. So the most important thing is you need to have a fair understanding of what you're getting into. So probably if you don't understand it well enough, don't feel embarrassed, seek the advice of an expert. You just can't get into something because you uh, see everybody around you doing the same thing. Understand the products which you are getting into. That is the third habit, I would say, is uh, an important one. Also, seeking advice from the right kind of person. I've noticed that whenever I've, I've tried to take advice from somebody who's slightly older, the thinking has been more orthodox in the sense that get that, uh, that house out of the way, buy that property. Whereas you find a lot of millennial IFAs will turn around and say, do you really want to buy that house? Why can't you just rent and, and you know, get the same amenities or even better amenities? So the kind of advice that you get also, you know, is something you've got to factor in. Definitely. And I think that's somewhere that, again, comes down to your, your own uh, upbringing and, you know, what you, you have been taught as being very important. Right. Okay, let's move to uh, habit number four. So what would you uh, say should be habit number four? So after you have invested your money, I would say that monitor it periodically. You need to monitor that constantly. Of course, if you're doing it through a financial planner, probably he will he will keep you updated. He will tell you when to make the changes, when to shift from one asset class to another. In case you're, you're doing it on your own, then you need to monitor it uh, regularly. Now, partly the risk here is that there is a lot of noise. If you read... Uh, uh, papers, you, you look uh, in television, there's all kinds of information. We are, we are drowning in information pretty sure. much today. So it's very important that you don't get uh, overwhelmed by the information which causes you, which may prompt you to, you know, react in a panic. But at the same time, you need to be aware of what is happening in the world around you, how that's affecting your investments, and then take advice based on that or act on your own. In short, be up to date with your portfolio. Uh, I think that's habit number four for me. Monitor your investments regularly. Do your own homework uh, a bit on the side is uh, uh, Santosh's mantra. And finally, the fifth and final habit that you'd like all our listeners to follow, Santosh. Well, Rishi, uh, the fifth habit, I think, is the most important one. And in the absence of the fifth, the other four can only help you so much. Uh, the fifth one is discipline. I think you need to tell yourself that come what may, I will try to ensure that I, I save at least this much. Of course, there may be months when you will not be able to save as much and there will be months where you may save more or you may get uh, uh, some unexpected sum of money which you hadn't really bargained for. But I would say that discipline is very important. And if you're investing in something which is linked to the stock market, something like mutual funds and all, don't try and time the market. That's a temptation. And so once you have decided that this is the amount of money I need to save, then probably you need to ensure that every month you set aside that much money and you invest it in a discipline. If you've committed some amount of money into whatever financial instrument, then you better stick to your plan. Fantastic. Friends, we've had some really insightful thoughts shared by Santosh Naya today, and I'm going to take you through it quickly in our Wisdom in the Bank segment. The five habits that help you go a long way with your investments are Habit number one, have a clear target. Habit number two, understand your appetite for risk. Habit number three, seek advice where necessary. Habit number four, monitor your investments regularly. And habit number five, be disciplined in saving money and don't try to time the market. Wow, Santosh, I just realized that a lot of these things are just common sense and we're probably not doing them because we're not investing in ourselves or are just plain lazy. <laughs> well, I agree with you, Rishi. <laughs> but new, this new year, it's really time to change. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my smartphone for some really, really smart things like, you know, set up reminders, maybe uh, use some apps which are relevant relevant to build these habits and implement all of these new habits in the year 2019. 
and I'm sure all our listeners will do too. Thanks a lot, Santosh. Wonderful chatting with you. Cheers. Same here. It was a pleasure, Rishi. And that's a wrap on our show, NSC InvestorCast. I'm your host, Rishi K, for the NSC Presents InvestorCast, an exclusive investor podcast powered by Money Control. To know more about our podcast, log on to moneycontrol.com and visit the podcast section. In case you'd like us to address any of your investment queries on the show, do write in to us at nscinvestocast at nw18.com. That's nsceinvestocast at nw18.com. You can also reach out to us on Twitter at moneycontrol.com or Facebook at moneycontrol.com. Do remember the hashtag NSCinvestocast. That's it then. Till we meet again, thank you for listening.